back to midday. We are down at the Camel's Art Gallery this afternoon, checking out the latest exhibit on display in the main gallery. It's called Jerry Pethick Shooting the Sun, Splitting the Pie. And we're going to learn more about this from the curator, Chero Neville. Uh, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is a wide variety of different artwork in here. Maybe we'll start by talking a little bit about Jerry Pethick. Who is he? Yes, um, he uh, is an artist who's actually passed away in 2003, and this whole exhibition is a retrospective of his work. Um, it was originally shown at the Vancouver Art Gallery in 2015, and so this is just a slice of their larger exhibition, which, as I said, was a retrospective, which is kind of a unique uh, curatorial project because you're, br you're bringing together a person's life's work. Yes. So it's a real survey of everything um, that he's made, really. Is he Canadian? He was born in London, Ontario, and he went to school in London, England, and uh, so there were some, some people that really influenced him along the way. Um, but also uh, things like um, in the 60s, um, I think it was 1965 was when uh, color television first came to the UK. And he saw this interview with a man named Dennis Gabor in color about holography, um, which seems like this sort of sci-fi thing um, and it totally fascinated Jerry and uh, then he actually met uh, Dennis Gabor and then uh, in 1971 he moved to San Francisco and they founded the School of Holography. Interesting. It looks yeah. like he uses a lot of reflection and light to uh, showcase his work in some of the pieces. Absolutely. Yeah. And so the, the thing that he was interested in, he also encountered plastics. So he was interested in um, that as a new technology uh, at the time and, and how um, you could see a full spectrum of light. Um, um, and then the whole thing with holography was that this idea that um, he, he declared that maybe it made sculpture obsolete in some way because the whole idea with sculpture is that you see it in 3D and then holography does this. Um, so he really went down that road, but I think it was like a way of democratizing the, the military technology. Um, so bringing it to people and to artists as a way of thinking about three-dimensional space. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he uses a lot of that um, and this idea of material space in his work. Um, he was also really fascinated by this period in, in Western um, art history and science, uh, kind of at the end of the 1800s and the beginning of the 1900s, people like um, the scientist Gabriel Lippmann, who uh, was a Nobel Prize winner, and he actually was the first person to fix color photography. Um, and he also did these experiments with flies eye lenses. And uh, that is um, basically the early uh, thinking that um, Jerry developed something called the photographic array out of, which uses um, these Fresnel lenses. Auguste Fresnel invented these lenses that were used in lighthouses to refract light. And what Jerry did was he set up this whole system of um, like um, a piece of glass in a grid and then he would take incremental shots of the same subject and then when he creates his sculptures he um, puts a piece of glass in front of it and then puts a bunch of these lenses in front so that the um, the serial images become a composite image and it does this kind of magic trick uh, where it recreates the image in a new way. Is that what we're looking at behind us here? Yes, this is called Out of the Corner of an Eye. And some of his work, this actually has an interesting kind of story which you, is important to know or not. Um, essentially, uh, when you look at it, you, you um, may recognize something that looks like an elephant. That's in what this. I see. You do? Yes. Okay. So the image there is a, a serial image, multiple images of a snow plow that's in front of a train, a recognizable subject for people in Kamloops. And uh, so then you see in this amazing sweet spot right in the middle, the composite image that comes together like magic, showing the larger snow plow. And there's this story about about Jumbo the elephant who um, escaped from the circus and he was hit by this train mm -hmm. and uh, so that's the resemblance of the elephant there. Interesting. Yeah and it, you know there, um, his work isn't overtly political but there is kind of a, an interest, an underlying interest in his work in um, kind of 
our, our relationship to nature. Sure. Um, and so obviously the use of an elephant for our entertainment purposes. And mm -hmm. so there's a bit of a commentary there. Any other pieces of his work that you want to specifically talk about today? Um, well, there's this incredible shirt that's just hanging in space uh, that's uh, part of a work called Semaphore Goya. And if you look carefully, it's, it's this woven um, piece of strips of cedar, I think, or fur. And, and, there, and in between there are all these saw blades. So there's these recognizable parts. Um, I should mention that he moved to Hornby Island in 1975 and uh, he had access to the recycling depot there. So many of the materials in his work are, are recognizable kind of everyday objects, but he's repurposed them. And um, the reference to semaphore Goya is, you think of semaphores and navigation um, on the sea, but also Goya and that incredibly powerful image of the execution. There's that man in that white shirt mm -hmm. being executed. So when you look at that work, there's actually three parts to it. And you, you might think that they're distinct, but part of his practice was bringing together that array and the shirt, which is a sculptural element. And then there's also these melt crates that are on the floor with these beautiful glass blown blobs um, that came out of his residency at the Pilchuck Glass School where David Chihuly did a lot of work. Um, so he, he brings together a lot of elements. So this is a very interesting collection of work. Yeah, it's, um, I think it's gonna blow people's mind. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's lots of intrigue, um, and as, as I said, like just the materials themselves, sure. it's, it's fascinating yeah, to look very at. Much so very different, but yet very interesting. And this is going to be here until the 10th of September. Is that right? Yes. Fantastic. Anything else you want to add, or should we wrap this up? Um, I will also just say that uh, this has special meaning for us at the Kamloops Art Gallery because originally the idea for this exhibition came from Annette Hertig, who was my mentor and the previous curator at the CAG. And so she worked with Grant Arnold. Unfortunately, she didn't get to see it come to fruition, but um, it really felt important to bring it to Kamloops because of her work here. Awesome. And normally yeah. it would be in Vancouver, is that right? It was in Vancouver okay. in 2015. And so this is, yeah, the smaller selection that I've made for Kamloops. Fantastic. All right. If you would like to come and check out this fantastic exhibit, it is here throughout the summer until the 10th of September. Uh, and you can also check things out online as well. Uh, for more information about this exhibit, uh, we will take a quick break. We'll be back with more Midday in two minutes. Stay with us.